Uh, thank you, Art. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Erwin Ort. I am from RVXL. Um, we are one of the sponsors of this conference, so maybe this is the right moment for me also to say that it's very great to be here. And I see that's a very nice and good conference with very interesting talks. So, excellent uh, work for the organization. Thank you. Um, I'm going to tell you something about synchronizing data between uh, a data source and a semantic media wiki. And we're going to do this in two parts. First, I will tell you about the theory. And after that, Robin is going to show you that it actually works in real life. So, um, and so, okay. Um, those of you who attended the conference of last year in Breda, they might recognize this sheet because I reused it. This is our use case. Huh? We do architecture modeling. Um, it's a very specific use case. We model it in open source tool Archie most of the time. And from there we publish things in Semantic Media Wiki. It's a very specific use case, but the mechanism that we have developed now is actually generic in nature. So I'll show you. So you can use it also for other kinds of source data. Um, so we have architecture models. We publish them in a semantic media wiki where we have things like SVG diagrams and a lot of information. And the good thing is that our models are semantic properties. So we can do ask queries to, for example, say which application components in our IT landscape are managed by department X uh, or which applications are supporting business process B. Things like that. Now the way that we work currently is that we use um, file exchange. So since a number of years the Open Group, which is the uh, organization governing the Archimate standard, the Open Group has defined a so-called Archimate exchange file format, which is an XML schema. XML format to exchange architecture models between tools. So we use that file format uh, and it works, but it has a number of disadvantages. So first of all, it's a manual thing. In Archie or other modeling tools, you have to press the button to export, to create an export file. You have to go to Semantic Media Wiki to the special page that we created. There, press the button to upload and import the file. It works, but it's manual. It's not real time. Um, you get an updated model in the wiki every time you import the file. So if you don't do that continuously, then you can you lag behind in your uh, wiki. Furthermore, um, the the XML format requires the full model. Um, so file always contains the full model and an architecture model at least in our business can be up to 10 20,000 objects so you have a large XML file and it needs to be processed all in all um, so even if only one element has changed eh? for example I have a business process and I saw there was a typo in the name I changed I uh, fixed the typo I have to process the whole model, which is very time and resource consuming because it will create numerous uh, update jobs. Then uh, they're not, not everything results in a page edit. The system is smart enough to see that those other 19,999 elements haven't changed, but it has to verify that first. So time and resource consuming. You can end up with over 100,000 wiki job because every page that has changed also creates a number of HTML cache update jobs. So it can take over an hour to process things. Um, and perhaps even worse, if you have a lot of jobs in your job queue and they get processed, then sometimes we notice that Semantic Media Wiki somehow gets confused and skips jobs. So you may end up with your architecture model in the wiki, but one or two or three pages are not updated. 
um, and during processing you have that anyway. So if processing <coughs> takes an hour, then after half an hour you, you can watch your architecture model. You may see your business process with the correct name on a number of pages and an incorrect name on other pages because it's not finished yet. So that's, well, it has disadvantages. Our customers don't really complain about that. Every once in a while they say, hey, this is, right, this is weird, and then we fix it and just uh, refresh the page and it's fixed, but it's not the way it should be. So we have been thinking, can't we do it a better way? Can't we do it in real time? Um, since some time, Archie, the open source modeling tool, has a plugin with which you can store your repository in a Git repository. So what it does, and normally Archie works with a, a file, source file, which is also XML. But in the, the co-Archie Git plugin, the file is um, in, split up in little chunks. Each element is a chunk, which is a file in itself in the Git repository. So you end up with a tree with a lot of files each file representing an element in your architecture, which is an excellent starting point to create real-time synchronization. Now, how does it work? So this is what we have. Now, our specific use case, we have a GitLab co archive repository with our architecture model. And on this side, we have a semantic media wiki. Uh, Archimedes is, is, is how we name it. But as I said, we have a generic method for synchronizing data. So I've also said that we have a data source A and we have a data source C, which may not be GitLab, but something completely different, but with data that somehow we want to have reflected in a semantic media wiki. And maybe we have other semantic media wiki instances, which we also want to feed with data from one or two of these data sources. So what we did is, I have to say what, what Robin did, because he built the stuff. Um, we wrote a generic event handler class. <coughs> it's, it's not part of the semantic media wiki domain. It's a separate component running in a separate environment. And it listens to event notifications sent from GitLab. Every time you do a commit, the push in GitLab, it sends an event to the generic handler. This generic event handler just sees, okay, this is an event. I know that it's coming from my data source B, the GitLab instance, because I have that in the table somewhere, and it says if from data source B there is an event, it is a GitLab co archie event. And my target for this event is this semantic media wiki. So what it does is, okay, if this is a co archie event, then I'm going to invoke a co-archie event parser. Now this class knows everything about co-archie events. So it is capable of reading the event payload and extracting from that the branch and commit ID, which is the important data that we need to have. So after that, the event handler uh, makes a call to the API the media wiki instance. This is the standard media wiki API. Behind that we have written an API module which understands this call because it's, it has a number of parameters, specifically the, rep, the repository, and the branch, branch, and the commit ID. So what it does here is this API module reads that data and then it looks up in its own configuration table, okay, if this is a commit, let's say it's commit number 22. The previous time I received a notification was with commit number 14. So apparently there have been eight commits in between. Now the idea of course is that every commit is immediately notified. But if at any time one of these things fails and it doesn't reach this one, it won't be updated, but that's not a problem because if the next commit uh, does arrive here, it knows, okay, so apparently I missed something, I'll do my update based on two commits ago. So it creates a job, a job on the media wiki job queue, just a standard job queue. 
But the, the job is a specific co archie integration job. And its parameters are the repository that we're talking about, the branch in that repository, the previous commit that we processed, and the current, the new commit. So when this job is run, what it does is say, okay, so apparently something happened, a change, there has been a change in the repository. Uh, I'm going to ask, and it's processed by this generic event handler because this thing knows where to reach the repository. It's going to ask the GitLab repository, can you get me a diff? Can you tell me what has changed between this previous commit that I processed and the current commit? And the repository answers it with a diff. And this diff is basically uh, a zip file with all the XML fragments and the files in the repository that have changed. And a little manifest file that says, well, file number A has uh, been added to the repository. File number B has changed. File number C is not in this zip file, but it was deleted. So then here we know exactly what has changed. And then we have another class which can read the files that were sent in this zip as part of the diff. So it can see, okay, I have uh, this file which represents my business process component in the architecture. I can see that the name has changed. I can see that uh, perhaps some other property has changed. And, what, and it, it, it transforms that information into the content of the wiki page that represents that business process. And then this, this job is actually doing another, um, posting another job to the job queue to edit the page with the new content. And that's basically the story. So it's a generic event handler. There were a number of classes. Actually, the, yeah, you can't really see the color difference, but this one, this one, and this one are specific for CoArchie. But the other components are just standard components that can be used for other data sources as well. Um, we may have a, a top desk uh, system registering incidents about applications. And if we want to have data from there also reflected in our media, we, we can use the same mechanism. As long as the source is capable of sending event notifications, and as long as it's capable of answering questions, okay, thanks for your notification, what happened? Give me the details. So this, the, the mechanism is generic. We can connect multiple data sources of different types to one target. We can also have one data source connected to multiple targets, semantic media wikis. We have this config table to specify the exact relation. Um, domain knowledge is focused in specific classes. We use the API, we use the job mechanism, and synchronization status is always logged in semantic media wiki so that if anything happens, we can just wait for a next event and then get back to the correct state. Um, and we can also use that for an initial synchronization do me every change since the start. Rebuild my, uh, my data in the, um, in the semantic media wiki. So that's basically the story. And then it's time for a demonstration. So I'm going to give you yes. the mic. Thank you. Good luck. I'll keep it here. So we're going to attempt something very dangerous, which is giving a live demonstration of a product that is still in its alpha development. <laughs> Let me quickly switch. Using a huge <laughs> No, of course not. It's not. <laughs> Let me find Zoom again. So as Erin mentioned last, um, there need, at some point there needs to be some kind of initialization of the model. Um, 
This is a wiki page that is in one of our other extensions and it shows all of the Artemate models that are currently imported in the wiki. As you can see, there are currently none. You can refresh the page so that you can see that it's actually the case. So let's first go to the Smart Connect Go RT page. This is a special page that is implemented especially for the Go RT route that we have. Unfortunately, it's all still in Dutch, but I will translate wherever necessary. And the nice thing is that on the wiki side, we do not have to register any credentials of the Git repository itself. Those are all saved securely in the, in the central part, in the generic event handler. The only thing we have to do is configure the model itself. For that, we do need the repository URL, but we do not need any a username or password or access token. And we can see that we have configured it to, uh, to listen on the branch master. We've given it a name and a status and a last uh, deployed commit, which is still before I removed the model fully from the wiki. Um, so in order to get the model and start the initialization process, we have this action that we can start. I want to connect using the event handler and I want to do a full import of the model with the name CoRT SMW integration. So I will start that now. It will push a job to the job queue. And in the meantime, I will show you in the Archi model editing tool what this small model looks like. It has two architecture views. It has this one which says that an application components Microsoft Office is uh, aggregating these three other application components, namely Excel, PowerPoint, and Word. And I have the second view where we see that the actor Robin is assigned the role of developer. A very, two very simple views uh, using the Archimate modeling language. So now I hope that in the meantime my job was executed <laughs> and I will try to refresh this page. Okay, and we see that we have now have an Archimate model right here and it's called the CoRT SMW integration model. So this is the same interface that we use when we import models using the AMF standard. Uh, we use the same functions, we use the same templates, uh, we just use another integration mechanism to actually get the data on the wiki. So these two names might seem familiar to you. It's my existing view, which has the same application components. And in the top one, we should have Robin that is assigned the role of developer. Now for the actually tricky part, I'm going to add another actor. Let's call him Aaron. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with how uh, the, what the CoArchy extension looked like, but it adds a collaboration tab here on top. And now that I have made a change, I have to save it. I can say commit my change, add an actor, after which I can publish the change. So the only thing that this is doing is creating a local commit and then pushing that commit to the, to the external Git repository. If I now go back to the special page, we see here uh, from three minutes ago, we see that I started a manual import, which was the initial synchronization. And we see that just 15 seconds ago, it received a signal from Git, after which it started a Git integration job and then an import job. So now, fingers crossed, let me refresh this page. We see that the actor Erwin has occurred in the view as well. So how exactly does this connection look like between the generic event handler and the repository? This is the repository on GitLab that is connected to Archie. So if I go here, <coughs> shows you that it was authored one minute ago and I added an actor and in the webhooks this is how we send a signal <coughs> or a notification to the event handler in the case of a, this in this case we only configured the push events so when I did a commit and then I did a push to the repository it fired this hook which is contacting our generic event handler the, the middle component after which the event handler sends the signal <coughs> to the wiki and the generic event handler is currently built using PHP Laravel uh, as an application. I can quickly show it. It's a, right now, it's still a very basic application, but it does exactly what it needs to. 
and it works based on two principles, routes <coughs> and repositories. So right here you can see that we have two repositories configured, one of them being the co-archi SMA integration model, and it has uh, this wiki URL that I was previously on configured. And right here it also has the configuration for the username of, to access the repository and an access token in order to able to fetch that data from Git using Git's official Git protocols. And then the part that we need to have configured after that is a root. Uh, so we need to tell uh, the event handler that when we receive something from the GoArchi SMA integration repository, you need to send it to this wiki. And when you get a signal from this wiki asking for that actual data, you need to be able to send it back to the wiki. And again, here we have configured the credentials. So one of them uh, is, oh, well, both of them are to contact the wiki. So you can see that the target type is the same. Uh, and this is just a bot account, a bot <coughs> username and a bot password. And I think that's all for me to demo at the moment. We will be working out this product further and making it more stable. And yeah, the, the, the nice thing is that it's so generically set up. So you only need another connector if you want to connect it to something other than a wiki. Uh, or if you want to receive a signal from something other than Git, you just need to implement a new connector and then uh, you can use it. Yeah, and just to, to, to add one more thing, uh, our specific use case is about architecture models. So the content that we have in the repository is more or less literally copied to the Semantic Media Wiki instance, but you don't have to make a copy. If you, basically this whole mechanism is about responding to events happening in an outside external data source. You can do other things with the information that you get in your event notice. So maybe you just want to record that something happened, you know. You can do anything with, with this mechanism. Just create your class that knows how to handle the data in the event. So it's a really generic mechanism. Any questions? Yes, if I can borrow your yeah, sure. or mic. Questions? Um, first of all, this is incredibly impressive, and I'm, it was nice to see the live demo and see it beautifully working. Um, I, you mentioned at one point something about um, pro semantic properties not getting updated, and I'm not sure if it's related. There is um, a bug, um, an issue um, that is, I just pulled up the number, um, it's where to go, 5,392 on the um, um, SMW issue list that's been affecting a lot of people, including me, um, where semantic properties don't get updated. I would love to see um, those of us affected swarm on trying to figure out what's going on and coming up with a solution. Okay, um, thank you. I'm not familiar with that particular bug, but we have um, seen more than one bug in the past about updating semantic properties, and we're still struggling with that uh, in certain situations, and we don't really know which situations cause it, so I can imagine that other people have seen the same, same bug, so we have to solve it somehow sooner or later, but I can understand if other people also have this, uh, this issue, yeah. Yes, I have two questions. One is um, a generic event handler so sounds like something that must be already there. So why did you have to write it yourself? I mean, I don't know, I have no idea, but it just seems to me that it's very <coughs> obvious that something like this, this must already exist in some form. That's the first question. And the second is, um, will this be open sourced? Can we use this uh, or parts of this? <coughs> yes, thank you, Bernard. Good questions. Um, First of all, generic event handlers. Um, I'm not really sure where, whether there is already something, but it's not a big thing. It's, it's not a big class, is it? It's a simple thing. So probably finding something that could be used may be more work than just mm -hmm. creating it. 
Um, is it open source? Um, currently it's not. Um, it's not an extension it's in a separate, separate layer column in, in, in the architecture. So we can't publish it as an extension, I think. Um, but there's no reason why we wouldn't want to share it with other people, I think. So um, and I'm not sure how we can, yeah, we can put it in a GitHub uh, thing somehow, probably, yeah. Yeah. I have a question. <clears throat> uh, what is the primary reason? Is it because um, is this also an, an, a way to share these models with um, larger user groups than people that have access to the to, uh, to the model? Um, yes. Well, we we have a number of customers in the the public domain which. And those customers want to publish reference architectures. Yeah? For example, reference architecture for Dutch municipalities. We have several hundreds of municipalities uh, who want to use those architecture models. So that's, that's our primary driver for publishing architecture models. Um, perhaps one more thing to say about this, 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 this bug. Um, it's not that we, we got rid of the bug now, but it can still be there on the initial synchronization. If you in initially synchronize a model of 20,000 elements, you will still have 100,000 jobs and still there will be issues. But if you have real-time synchronization, you will have many more synchronizations, which will be smaller because every change will be smaller than a once a week batch upload. So, and smaller changes tend to lead to less likely occurrence of bugs. So. So that's for us one of the reasons that we really want this. Yeah. Online question? No. Online applause. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, thanks to Robin, by the way. He is the, the real developer on this. I'm only the, 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 the one who tells the theory. So mm -hmm. um, then it's back to you, Ad. Yeah. Thanks, Karen.